Marcus asks, how can I have a ceiling in a room in order to affect overall balance level, but hide it from both viewer and render? What is up? In this video, we're going to be looking at how to make an invisible ceiling so that it's going to bounce light, but you're not going to be able to see it. And we'll see what that means in a second. This is a request, and I actually do this all the time, but I've never made a tutorial on it, so let's do that today. Uh, so we're going to go into Cine Designer, and I'm going to grab... Let's just grab a frame light with with stands. How about with stands? Why not? So this thing actually is putting out light. It's not a diffusion frame that's diffusing it. It's just a gigantic light source itself. So we're going to go like this and I'm going to lower it like this here, like that. So it's kind of going through the ground, but that's okay. So uh, there's a couple problems here if we're going to try to visualize this, right? And let's just look at those really quickly. So I'm going to turn it on and you can tell here that the light's going to come over the set wall and hit the wall. And that's not going to be good. That's not something we want to happen. So I'm going to just get the rendering setting set up here. I like to show this every time because I feel like you can forget it. It's really easy to forget. So progressive, that's all fine. And we're going to need GI. GI should just basically always be on. Light mapping, and we'll say low. And let's take a quick render of what we got going on here. So I'm going to save. And this configuration of having a 12 by frame right outside of a window may look funny, but that's actually really common because on most sets, you don't actually have the budget to build a whole exterior or have like a trans light or even, even green screen it. In a lot of cases, it's perfectly acceptable to literally just put diffusion on the windows or a frame and just blast light right through it. So it's just pure white. And then you put curtains over it and you try to like downplay it, but that's very common to do. So this is moving in the right direction, right? But of course, the light from the top, that's not something we want. So you could either flag it off or you could build a false ceiling um, slash a set ceiling. And we're going to do the set ceiling, but we're going to do something a little bit different as well. So let's just make up here. We're going to go in. We're going to make a plane. It has to be a plane. And we're going to bring it up like this. And we're going to make it the dimensions of the ceiling. And that's going to be good. So it can even, if we look at it from the side here, it's even okay for it to like kind of go into the wall like that, just to make sure that it's light tight, that light isn't kind of like sneaking in from funny angles like this. That's okay. That's completely fine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to double click down here and we're going to make a new material. What's up C4D Nick? We're doing fancy things. So we're going to call this ceiling white and white's important. Okay, so we're going to drag this onto there. So now we have a ceiling. I'm going to save. Shift R. And let's look at the difference in renders. I probably shouldn't have moved the camera so that we can see the same. But anyway. So you can already tell from the light mapping. I love light mapping. It always looks so cool. It's like a preview of what it's going to look like here. So progressive rendering. We're still in quick preview. So I'll, get, I'll let it do like one progressive pass. But I think it's fairly obvious what we've done. We've added a ceiling so that there isn't light coming from the top from on here which breaks the illusion it doesn't make sense this is something you deal with on actual shoots as well and in 3d and now we have this we have this um we have the light blocked from the top but we have it still coming in so the light from here is hitting the ceiling bouncing down it's coming through here it's making this pattern on the wall which isn't the most realistic i don't love that um but this is a, a nice sim, a nice GI sim. This is what you would do on set, and this is what we would do in 3D as well. But the request now is to be able to render from the top view so that you can see what's going on, but still have the GI from the ceiling still bouncing around, if that makes sense. And we'll do that in a second. And that is really easy to do in Cinema 4D and, and kind of intuitive, so I like that. Oh, my computer's kind of lagging here. CPU rendering, I guess, is kind of taxing on my computer right now. I'm feeling, I'm feeling the lag. I feel the lag. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna close some stuff real quick. I'm closing uh, Spotify and Discord because those are potentially lagging the system out. So let's make that happen here. Let's see if I can remember how to make that happen. <laughs> okay, yeah. So here we go. So this is up here is our ceiling, and I think I'm gonna move my face cam because I'm in the way of the settings, important settings. Oh, nope. Am I back? There we are. Okay, so I'm gonna move my face cam over here. That's a little bit better. I'm also gigantic. I probably don't need to be this big. This was from my VR gaming setup. So, oh, appreciate the follow, Spencer. 
Okay, so I'm locking this. I'm locking the, the webcam. Okay, so. So, what we want to do now is make it so that we can see through the ceiling when we render or from the viewport, but we still get this nice GI lighting in here. So let's do that at the moment. So we need a new material to start. So we have this ceiling, which is like your white, just generic white diffuse material. I don't know what else to call it other than that. But we're gonna make a new one and we're gonna call it Invis. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off color, we're gonna turn off reflectance, and we're gonna turn on transparency. So that's just 100% see-through. It's not like glass where there's refraction. It's just invisible. It's just invisible. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag this up here onto the ceiling material. So maybe hard to see because I recorded 4K. But uh, we have two materials on here now. We've got the wall, the ceiling one, and we've got the invisible one. And what we want to do is we want to click on the one that is uh, the white wall. And I believe, I believe that's the bottom. Uh, what you're going to see down here is if you click on the tag again, so click the tag, it's going to say material, selection, projection, which we should probably change, but it's going to say side. And right now it's set to both, but there's a front and a back. So if I, sent, if I set the wall material to the back, I believe that's the bottom. Then you click the invisible one and set this one to the front. Yeah. So now in here, it's all normal stuff. We have the balance lighting, but up here... Oh, it's invisible. But now if I save and I render from, where's it going to be obvious? I don't know. But basically if I render from here now, I can see through to the, to the actual set, but there will still be top lighting bouncing around in there. And so you could potentially build your set walls this way, your floor, your ceiling, so that you could render through like this view but you're still getting the bounce lighting off of the ceiling. Hopefully that makes sense here. And obviously it's not physically accurate, but you'll still get physically accurate lighting in the box down here, but you'll be able to see through it. So I'm not sure if uh, anyone else has that need, but you can do that if you want to. I hey, appreciate the, the follow, uh, Sherle. So... That is basically the tutorial for this one. This is going to get edited, chopped up, put it on the YouTube channel. But that's how we make see-through. I don't know what to really call it. It's like one-way see-through walls or something. It's like a one-way mirror. Um, I'm not even sure what the thumbnail is going to be to explain this. But someone requested it on the Facebook group. And I thought that's what I would do today on the stream. And it's the same workflow in Redshift. You make an invisible texture. And it's all about using a plane here and making sure that you have the back as uh, a diffuse. Oh, thanks for the follow, Diane Levine. <laughs> it's my wife, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, you make the, the white material on the back and you make the clear material, the invisible material on the front. And you kind of just experiment and it's WYSIWYG. So you can, you can see it in the editor if you got it right. 